What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are going to be talking about this little device called the TD-1S. If you haven't heard of this device, it is a really cool piece of equipment that you insert a filament into, and then you get a reading directly into HueForge for what the color and TD value is of that specific filament. And so today we're gonna talk about the use case for something like this. We're gonna talk about how you calibrate it and set it up, and then how you can incorporate it into your HueForge workflow. This thing has been an absolute game changer. Let's dive right in. So before we get right in, I just wanna make sure that you guys know that this is not required for HueForge. There are lots of TD values already built right in to HueForge as it is, and there are also tons of TD values available online, but there aren't TD values for everything. And plus, sometimes your TD values for what's listed here on the left and the TD values of your actual spool of filament may be a little bit different. And that's where something like the TD-1S comes in handy. So. We're gonna dive right in to calibrating your TD-1S. Um, all you need to do is unplug it and then plug it directly into your PC. Now, when I was doing this, I was actually having a, a pretty significant amount of problems. It wasn't loading, the firmware wasn't updating, Hueforge wasn't picking it up. So I shot a message over to Neokoi Prince, Danny, and he told me that I just need to keep trying it. And so I literally sat here for maybe 30 minutes unplugging it, plugging it back in, unplugging it, plugging it back in. And finally, I got it to update. And so if you're having problems getting your PC to pick up the TD-1S, I would just encourage you to keep trying it. If for whatever reason it doesn't work, you can always reach out to customer support. They'd be more than happy to help you out. They've been great to me. So that was my problem I had when I first got it, but now it is working flawlessly. So it's plugged in and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the new tab that we have here inside of Hueforge. If you look up here, we have this little TD1 um, panel and we see we have all of these new settings. If I unplug my TD1, it will disappear. And then when I plug it back in, it will show back up. We can launch into our TD1 settings. And there, there are a couple things in here. I actually turned off flip display so that I can use the handle of my, I can use my little cable here as a handle to hold filaments in. Otherwise it would be like this. So it's literally just flipping the display. I like having the USB-C cable on the bottom. So I flip this display. I just turn that off. And then you can check out these other, um, you know, settings here. Disable color detection will only give you the TD value and it won't actually give you the color code, the hex code there for that color. Continuous TD is if you want to run um, filament through this. This is really good for um, maybe manufacturers of filaments or something like that. If you're just learning HueForge and just getting into your TD-1S, you probably don't need to enable that setting. Um, and same thing with continuous TD. Both of these, just leave them off if you're just diving into it. But um, if, if you are manufacturing filament and for some reason on my video, then you can turn those settings on. And then screen mirroring will, um, I, I believe this will allow you to um, actually cast the, the screen of your TD-1S onto your, um, into your HueForge. And you can actually get that um, screen mirroring um, on, your, on your screen. We'll turn that on and see, see what that does. Um, and then we just hit save and apply. Um, then we can launch TD1 SIM. So this is that kind of like screen mirroring thing. I haven't had much luck with this setting. Um, maybe if one of you guys knows down in the comments why I, I'm not seeing my, my values pop up on my screen. It's not a huge deal because we're going to walk through it together um, and everything automatically pops up in Hueforge anyways. So now that you have your TD1S plugged in, Make sure it's plugged in. Make sure that you're running the newest version of HueForge. Update the firmware. Do all of that good stuff. You'll be prompted to do it. Don't worry. You got this. I believe in you. Um, and then we're going to click up here for TD1. Now, we want to do something, and you're going to want to click Calibrate Lux Sensor. Make sure that there is no filament inside your TD1S and uh, go ahead and click that. What that's going to do is just shine some light inside of the TD1S and it's going to calibrate the light that's actually in the machine. So all you need to do is click it and then you're good to go. The next step of calibration, you'll actually need some filament for. And so um, you will need a white filament. I just clipped a little sample from my Bamboo Lab uh, Jade White, and then you'll need a black filament. This is just Bamboo Lab Basic Black. And then I would also encourage you to grab maybe like a gray filament. 
This is Bamboo Lab Basic um, Blue Gray. And then I also just snagged a green and a red um, just for testing purposes. All you will really need is your black and your white, but I would also toss a gray in there and I'll explain why in a little bit. So let's go ahead and click on um, Calibrate RGB colors, and we're going to see a little pop up, and it will let us know that we need a black and a white that's less than TD7. Now, for the black, it actually needs to be less than TD2. Um, it doesn't tell you here, but the black needs to be less than TD2, which Bamboo Lab Basic Black is. I believe it's 0.5. And then uh, Jade White is like a 5.5 or something like that. So we're good to go with our blacks and our whites. We're going to click OK. Now, it's going to tell us, now our simulator is working. Look at that. Um, it's going to say insert black. And so we're going to take our little black filament here and we are going to insert it into the side, into the opening here of our TD1S. We're just going to let that go and we're going to see the screen calibrate. It's going to say remove filament. So I'm going to take the black out. Then it's going to tell me to go ahead and insert the white filament. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to calibrate and then it's going to tell us to remove filament. Now it's going to tell us that the RGB is calibrated. So one way that we can check that is if we take our black filament and reinsert it into our TD1S, we are going to get a 0.1 TD and we are going to get our black hex code. This is a true black. And we're going to do the same thing for our white here. Insert that. It's going to scan. We're getting a 5.1 TD and we are getting a perfect FFFF hex code for our white. You can see that right here. That means that this is true white. And we told the TD1S that this was true white. That's why it's reading that it's true white. So now we're going to test our gray. OK, and this is where things get a little bit interesting because we're not technically done with our calibration. We're going to insert our gray here and you can see that it's going to pull up are gray. And if we look at this, this has like a, a blue hue on it. It's giving us a TD of 2.7 and it's giving us this blue hue. Um, this is not true blue gray. And we can actually see what true blue gray is over here on our left uh, because we have it pulled up and we see that the TD is pretty right. 2.7. Remember, they vary from batch to batch, but this color representation is not accurate. So I'm going to right click on it and click change color. Now, there are a couple things that we can do in here, but the primary one that we want to do during calibration is we want to edit this color to be as close to this color as possible. We want accurate color representation here inside of our Hue Forge. And so I'm going to bring this down a little bit out of the blue territory, even though it is blue gray. Um, I'm going to bring it a little out of blue more into gray, and then I'm going to bring it down. We're going to make it a bit darker. And you can see here, this is what we're aiming for. I'm going to like put it right on top of each other so we can see this is the color we're aiming for. And then this is our color right here. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. You can see that it's still maybe even a little too blue. Bring that down, bring it down even a little bit more. We're just going to kind of play with the slider until we get something that resembles our blue gray. And that's that's pretty close. That is a pretty close representation there of our blue gray, maybe a little too blue. And this is just going to take some testing. That's obviously way too blue, <laughs> All right? Um, readjust your eyes there and that that's pretty close. That's pretty close to what we're looking for um, with our blue gray. Oh, that's even closer. Yeah, I'm liking that right there. That is very close to our blue gray. So then we're going to click OK. Then in here, we are going to have the original color that was listed right there. And then we're going to have our new color. This is our adjusted color. Now, you could do this for every single filament that you scan, which is definitely possible. Or we could click this apply correction to TD1. And if we click that now, when we take out our filament and we reinsert it, we should get a more accurate blue gray representation. And if I close this out, I'm going to reinsert it just so that we see the pop up happen again. 
we should have a far more accurate blue gray than what we originally started with. And we can continue to test this with our green. So we'll take our green filament and we'll insert it. We know that this has a TD of about two, um, but it could be plus or minus a little bit. We're getting 2.3 and our green is very spot on. This is a very accurate kind of green color there. And so now our TD1S is calibrated. We used filaments that we know the code and the TD value of. And so now we have an accurately um, calibrated TD1S. So I'm going to go grab a new filament that is not inside of Hueforge. And we're going to calibrate it together and then add it to our filament list. So give me a second. Let me go grab it. I should have grabbed it before the video and then I didn't. And so now I have to get up while I'm recording. It's a whole thing. Also, did you guys notice I'm not wearing a hat today? Look at that. Um, this is a much more casual video. Um, typically, I'm very high energy. And today, I'm trying something new. Let me know down in the comments if you like it. So we have this yellow filament. This is a Jayo Mango yellow filament that um, I picked up for a Hue Forge. I don't like this filament, just as a heads up. It's very, it's very brittle, absorbs moisture very quickly. You can tell I've had it for literally three days. And it is already kind of giving me problems. So I need to dry it out. Um, but let's go ahead and scan it. We're going to add it to our filament library, see what we get. So we're going to toss it into our um, TD1S. And we see that we get this very bright yellow. And that is an accurate representation of this filament. We can type in our brand here. It is Jio. And we can type in the name, which is Mango Yellow. And it has a TD of 5.2, which is an accurate reading. Um, the, the website that I was looking at listed this one at a 5.1. So 5.2 is more than okay for our value. And we can add some tags if we wanted to um, maybe sort our filaments later. We could definitely do that. I'm not going to do that, but you definitely can. And we're going to click add. Boom. And we can close out of this. And now we see up here in my owned filaments, we have Jio Ma Mago. <laughs> I misspelled Mango. Um, we can just click Edit Filament <laughs> and add our Mango uh, yellow. And then we click Add. Okay, so now it's saved. Yellow, save and close. Uh, Jio Mango yellow. And now we have our filament added up here to our owned section. Um, and of course, we could unclick it from here. Um, and it will just go down into our unowned section. And so that is how you add filaments from your t new TD1S to your filament library. The reason that this is so nice is because in prior, I mean, you would have to do something called the seashell. C C you would have to do something called the seashell test. And the seashell test, uh, uh, all it is, is it is a seashell that you print out as a Hue Forge. And it, it has different layers for you to be able to see what the TD value is. And you would basically have to guess um, what it was depending on how the filament looked. If it was this opaque, it would be like a two. And if it was this translucent, it would be like a seven. And it, it was very much dependent on your eyes. The nice thing about this is that this automates your TD value system. You don't have to print anything out with your printer. You just need a small strand of your filaments and this uh, and Hueforge open, and you just toss it in to the tester, and it's going to automatically pull it up every single time. We have red at a TD of 1.5. This is very valuable for um, people that maybe don't have access to ordering something like uh, like Bamboo Lab filaments or ordering the filaments that are there on the left side of the screen um, that are just built into Hueforge. Maybe you only have access to PETG or other filaments that we just don't have a ton of in Hueforge. If we come to the ABS section, see we have like 15 filaments, maybe not even, maybe like 10. And so this will give you the ability to scan your filaments and add them into your library without having to um, pay someone to do it, which I have seen on Fiverr, which is crazy. Don't do that. Just ask around um, or having to scour Reddit or one of these websites to find the TD value for your filament. So that is the TD1S. Huge shout out to BQ for sending this to me. Thank you so much. This is kind of a surreal moment for me. It was the first time any company was like, hey, let's send this to you. And, and just we would love for you to, to check it out and try it. I've heard amazing things about it. And it has lived up to all of the hype. 
this will become a pretty normal flow um, for me in my Hue Forge creations. And now I am less scared to order filaments from different manufacturers that aren't just listed here inside of Hue Forge. And so huge shout out to BQ for sending this to me. If you want to pick up one for yourself, they are having an incredible Black Friday sale. Um, check out the description down below. I have an affiliate link. I get a little kickback. If you've been interested in one for a while, but just haven't done it yet, check out my link. It would help the channel and help me out a ton. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you guys in the next one, y'all. Until next time, take care.